that era thankfully is over with now. One, the era we're definitely in is traveling to other countries for big shows. That's what May is all about. King and Queen of the Ring will be taking place on May 25th. It is believed that those brackets will be revealed tomorrow during WWE Backlash France, which has been the most meagerly hyped pay-per-view slash PLE maybe ever. I mean, with everything WWE's had going on, I mean, really, it has not been hyped up at all. This feels like, and it's not an insult, but it feels like the MSG show on the MSG network or when uh, Capital Center shows used to appear on the USA network, it feels like a house show. This is your thank you for supporting and subscribing to Peacock. You know what I mean? Like, it just feels like a bonus house show because with the exception of one match, I don't see any titles changing hands. I don't see any surprises happening. But with that said, I think these matches, because there's not a lot of them, are going to get time. And I think the matches themselves could be, with the exception of one, which ironically is the same one as where I think there could be a title change. All of these matches, I think, should be good. Am I hyping up the thought of Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles too much? No, I think you're right. On paper, I expect this show to deliver. I expect to see a title change in the women's tag titles match. I expect to see a fantastic contest in the main event between Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles. But you're very much correct, Mike. This is like... Peacock in your house. Yeah. Yes, it is. It, it, you're, you, this is, you're getting a little bonus episode before you watch the Derby on Saturday, before you watch uh, Jaime and uh, Canelo go at it, if you're crazy enough to do that. I'm still not sure if I'm going to do that or not, Tom. Should I order that fight? Should I bet on that well, fight? Th there's also a Pantoja versus Ursig. What's that on? UFC 301. 301? Yeah, that's right. I didn't even right. know they were having one. Yep, tomorrow. Also, myself versus TJP mm -hmm. at Relentless Pro Wrestling up in Spokane, Washington. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Once a the loaded show is weekend. over with, folks, check my Twitter. I'll have that video up there with all the information of where Tom Lawler might be coming to your area as well as a nice highlight package of him punching people in the face it's always a wonderful thing cody rhodes and aj styles may punch each other in the face i think the match is going to be really good but cody rhodes i mean is there any chance he gets a loss here i mean like would roman have to like come back from the french riviera on vacation to attack him like there's no way cody rhodes loses or for that matter damian priest right there is I, I would be baffled, gobsmacked. I would dare to say bedridden if Cody Rhodes loses his title to AJ Styles. I, I would just could not fathom it. Who's Damian Priest even facing? Jey Uso. And to oh, that's me, right. It feels like this would be step one in the feud. You know, there's going to be more to come. Like yeah. you have a disputed finish because. Again, why would you beat Damian Priest? You're just starting to show cracks in Judgment Day. You know, to me, that's it's kind of crazy to do that, at least at this point. Well, plus, it seems as if they're setting up at some point maybe Logan Paul and Jay Uso. Is that the plan? It's possible. It would make a lot of sense. Logan to do, Paul actually. and Patrick Mahomes versus Jay Uso. Jeez. And Braun Strowman. Not a shot. Patrick Mahomes will be in a... Pa or Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. As some would call him. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think, yeah, there's a... You, you get a Bay Area accent, I guess, with that one. I don't, I don't know. But Dominic Mysterio, speaking of that man with the accent, the Mahomes himself, uh, he is reporting in the newsletter this week that Dominic Mysterio will miss six to eight weeks uh, as he rehabs from not having Tommy John surgery and just trying to work through his his uh, elbow issues with physical therapy. So that's the newest update on that. Uh, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton against Solo Sokoa and Tamatanga. 
I mean, there's no reason to beat Solo in Tonga right now. If you wanted to do a double DQ or some wild nonsense, I would save a non-finish like that. To me, just have Solo and Tama get the victory in some sort of nefarious way. Because if you're going to continue them with Owens and Orton, I mean, there's more madness to be had. And, and anytime there's a bloodline storyline, it seems like there's some length to it. So, I mean, again, this is another one. Is there any shot that Owens and Orton win? It doesn't make any sense to me. No, I Unless agree with Solo you. Unless it's Solo and Tonga, like, getting DQ'd for kicking too much ass or something. Yeah, I agree with you there. It... <sighs> I would imagine the bloodline walks out victorious. The only downside is that Kevin Owens, man, this guy seemingly just loses every single big match. Man. You would have to imagine they would beat him and not Randy Orton. I could be surprised by that. But it almost, I mean, it almost seems like we're going to get Orton and Owens as a, sort of a, like a, not, I don't want to say long term team, but semi-permanent team here I, on I the baby like face that. side of SmackDown. I mean, I'm fine with it. You know, it saves them both. Randy Orton, obviously older. Uh, Kevin, exactly. Owens, Kevin Owens, just it doesn't matter. He, he's going to go out there and take crazy, insane bumps regardless. So maybe this will cut down on those a little bit. Probably not, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I like these two as like a, a butt-kicking duo on the babyface side. They don't need to always be... Like, they haven't been best of friends, and they don't need to be. They're no. both professionals. That's what makes it great, because their personalities are the way they are, and fans accept what they are, so they're perfect They're perfect to just be brutal against. I just I love them it, brushing it, up against it, each other. It, it, it kind of like Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. Not, not to that level where they're battering each other back and forth, but when Sheamus and Drew McIntyre were teaming up, I just loved it. You know, you rarely see two big bruisers, not since the days of the formidable duo of Kane and Big Show have we seen such a team as powerful as this. Brody and Hanson. <laughs> Look, what I'm looking forward to is a Randy Orton Tamatanga match what? where they go like 12 or 13 minutes. Neither guy does anything. And I still think that it's awesome. Brian still thinks that it's awesome. Pro wrestlers in the business and from the past say it's awesome. And all of you out there absolutely hate it. So much about Rock this week. So I decided a good match for Rock would be uh, Cold Stone. Strap him on. Corner post must have done damage. And Stone Cold kicked the Rock out of the ring. Shane, Shane was rooting for Rock. A closed lap him while down. Rock put his arm out across Stone Cold. It was just a massive infusion. Stone Cold won the match. Cool. Can you verify we did not use AI to replace Granny? <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.